Hello, folks out there in internet land, and thank you for tuning that dial to the Eek channel. My name is James, and today I am joined by my co-host, Josh. Uh, this is a spoiler vision episode, which means that uh, we just watched a movie, um, and we're coming back to you with our hot takes and immediate review to determine if the film gets the original Eek seal of quality. This week on Spoiler Vision, it's a very special week, because... I kind of get, I don't want to call myself a curator, because I feel like that's extremely pretentious. It sounds so <laughs> hoity-toity. But I feel like, for the channel, for the Spoiler Vision show, I'm, in a sense, the, the curator of the show. I'm, I pick all the movies. We might show some shared interest in certain movies, but ultimately, I'm planning all the episodes, I'm picking the films, it all ends up on me. So every once in a while, that gets to, that feels a little heavy, and yeah. I'm just like, God damn it! I just want someone to tell me what to watch and what to review, and I don't want to have to pick things on my own. So what we're starting to do is every fourth Monday of the month, which we record a, a week in advance, so just don't worry about the schedule. That's that's not for you to worry. About. That's for me to worry about. But once a month, we are going to have a. Uh, one of one of the regular co-hosts on Spoiler Vision will be the one who chooses the movie. And we started off this process with Alex choosing the movie. Now, if you don't know Alex, uh, he's been on the show a few times. He was just on the Eek Speak episode, um, not last week, but the week before. Not, not the one that you just listened to, but the week before. And uh, he's a great guy. He has a very... Not a different taste in horror films compared to all of us, but just he definitely has a respect for the so good it's bad film. Completely. Which I do too, but his his love of them may go even farther than my own. For sure. So we had, whenever, whenever you and, and Alex kind of started coming to Scary Movie Monday at first, uh, first I showed you guys, like whenever... Cody and Danny and some of the other guys that were kind of regulars before wouldn't be there. It'd be like, hey, these are some of our greatest hits. Some of the good stuff that we've seen. They're not here. I want to rewatch it. You guys haven't seen it yet. Mm -hmm. So we watched some of those. Mm -hmm. Once we kind of got through those, and we knew it was going to be a day where it was just like just me, you, and Alex, mm -hmm. that's when we started watching the Sleepaway Camp movies. Oh, yeah. <laughs> because we all have that uh, recognition of so bad it's good and, and finding the, the, the goodness in the campiness. Ha-ha. <laughs> 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 Which in itself is a campy <laughs> statement. Okay, so yeah. So, Alex being in charge of selecting the movie, to some people, might be a little scary. <laughs> and so we were just really weren't sure what we were getting ourselves into today. Now, I have never seen Sleepwalkers before tonight. I hadn't either. I've heard of it. I hadn't heard of it. It gets talked about somewhat frequently on horror podcasts and stuff because it is the cat, Stephen King's cat movie. I'm like, okay, whatever. Like, um, So I didn't really know what it was or what was in it, but I had a general idea that there's like cat people. And that's about all I knew going into the movie, <laughs> but it's not the movie cat people. That's no. different. Um, so yeah, it is a, uh, 1992, yeah. uh, horror film. I didn't, uh, I didn't copy and paste my description for some reason. I still have popcorn in here from last <laughs> week. Well, you said it was the same. Alex said it was the same uh, year he was born. That's right. It's a 1992 uh, American horror film. I don't have the director offhand, but it is a Stephen King, uh, adapted from a Stephen King short story. I saw on posters that I was looking at today that it is the first Stephen King story written for... It uses a pun and says written for the silver scream or something like that. Like... Like, okay. maybe he, it seems like this story was unpublished, and maybe he had the story in the back of his mind, never actually put it in a book, and then they made it into the movie instead. Gotcha. It's kind of what it seems like. Okay. 
Which seems like a strange choice. Yeah, like if for all the seemingly hundreds of books he's written, <laughs> oh, he's like, no, this one, no. This is this is the straight one. to movie. This one needs to be a movie. So, uh, yeah, that's yeah, that's the description <laughs> I have. Okay, I'm just going to move on in to the old back of the box here. <laughs> In this terrifying tale of modern-day vampires who prey on virtuous young women, Tanya, a sexually curious virgin, falls for the new boy in school, Charles Brady, only to learn too late that he's a life-sucking sleepwalker. Mutating at will from golden boy to savage monster, Brady stalks Tanya to feed his seductive mother. As the tension... Good God, this movie. As, as the tension mounts and the casualties pile up, the town's tabbies gather for a final chilling showdown with the monsters in their midst. And we all know it's not nice to hurt people's felines. No! <laughs> That's literally on the back of the box of this movie. <laughs> All right. <laughs> to sleepwalkers. <laughs> to sleepwalkers. No. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. And now for our feature presentation. And that sound means that we are back. And we're back! Here we are. We just... Well, we finished. Uh, Sleepwalkers. And... You know what? I will say this. It is a different movie than I expected it to be. Uh, I, I could not find budget numbers on this, so I'm going to move right right into the trivia. Uh, are you ready? I, I want to hear everyone. Are you ready? Oh. Okay, so you called one piece of trivia that I didn't write down. Uh, at one point, we get like an outside shot of the neighborhood. Ah. And you say, is this the neighborhood from the Burbs? Yeah. Yes, it's the neighborhood from the Burbs. Called it. Is is the classic Universal backlot. <laughs> many many eighties movies were filmed here, but get ready. Uh oh, the Robertsons' house. So not the Brady's house, not the Cat People's house, right? The Tanya's house, right? Is the same structure that is used as the Dragonfly Inn on Gilmore Girls. <laughs> What? <laughs> no. <laughs> and I kept trying to see it, and it's been so long. It's been so long between the making of this movie. So, I mean, Gilmore Girls was in 2000. It was like yeah. almost 10 years. And so I'm sure there was tons of things changed on the inside. But I did recognize the entryway with the stairs kind of right there as you walk in. Yeah. And, like, that's what jogged my memory. I'm like, okay, yeah, that is the dragonfly. Yeah. Hey guys, we watched we watched Gilmore Girls. We have wives. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. So nuts, right? Yeah. Okay. Um. So, damn. I don't think uh Google Docs saved all of my shit because I have a bunch of other notes in here that aren't from this movie. That sucks. Come on, Google. <sighs> yeah, for real. Um. Okay. Well, we're just. I mean, there's there's plenty of trivia to talk about. We don't even have to actually have a list of trivia <laughs> necessarily. So one thing is uh, the two leads in this movie. Um, so we have, uh, oh man, I'm already forgetting names, real names, but Tanya and um, Charles. Charles. So both of these cats. <laughs> <laughs> didn't, oh my gosh. <laughs> didn't mean to do that. <laughs> so Charles goes on to star in Charmed. He's like the yes. main guy in Charmed. Yeah. And then uh, 
Tanya is is in Twin Peaks, but she's also in a uh, that other that other witch TV show um, Eastwick, which is of Eastwick. Yeah, she she ends up starring yeah. in that. So it was kind of an interesting thing that they were in this movie together. Mm-hmm. They both go go out uh, to be into witchcraft, Things. witch witch themed. TV shows. It's kind of interesting. Kind of an interesting uh, tidbit. Okay, so this movie has so many cameos. So many. There are so many cameos in this movie, I can't even talk about all of them. I didn't even know a lot of them happened until I was just watching the end credits, and I see John Landis is in this movie. Mm -hmm. Joe Dante, uh, uh, the director of Gremlins, is in this movie, and The Howling. Uh, Toby Hooper of Texas Chainsaw Massacre fame is in this movie. (laughs) Honestly, I didn't know they happened. Most of these guys, I don't really know what they look like. I know yeah. their names. I'm familiar with a lot of their work, but I can't recognize them if they just walk on screen for a no. second. It happens constantly. Obviously, uh, Stephen King has a cameo in the movie. He has a cameo in a lot of his movies. That's to be expected. But all of these other ones just seem out of left field. Like It's cool. I like it a lot. Mm-hmm. But like I feel like all of these cameos belong in something that is worth more than the sum of sleepwalkers. No, you you expect cameos of this number and caliber to be less, but in a better in a in a more <laughs> substantial movie. Yeah, like 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 something out there. Like I, I don't know, something comes to mind is maybe like um when Tom Savini redid uh, Night of the Living Dead in the 90s. Mm-hmm. And like uh, Tony Todd starred in it. So you had like Tom Savini and Tony Todd, like yeah. already horror icons. And then, like, let's say a movie like that, all of the great horror directors make a pop up appearance. Mm-hmm. And that makes sense to me. This random ass cat vampire movie. <laughs> it's like Stephen King just had a bunch of friends. He's like, hey, I'm making this movie. And like, hey, are you like. I'm I'm filming on this day. Are you free? <laughs> and they're like, yeah, I'll come by. It's yeah, we're all in LA. Yeah, What's the big deal? I'll come by. I'll Let's be a, do it. I'll be a cop. What's the big deal? <laughs> okay, so speaking of, you say uh, a cop. We're gonna move right into what happened in this movie. How does this movie start off, Josh? This movie starts off in Bodega Bay, California. <laughs> I'm assuming. Well, it, it said California. Uh yeah. Because eh, of palm trees. Bodega um, Bay. It's gotta so be. You see, you see two police officers, one of them being the f- very famous at the time and famous now, Mark Hamill. What the hell? Famous Jedi and uh, villain of Batman. Um, <laughs> he and, and his uh, other... His, and his villain partner. of Aubrey Plaza. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I haven't seen the new Child's Play. I'm assuming it's garbage, but that's just a hot take from someone who hasn't even seen the film. Maybe someday. Um, they... There are two police officers, and they go into this house that has a bunch of people outside because it's a crime scene. Yeah. And there are a bunch of, for those people that like cats, I'm a, I apologize. Mm. There are a bunch of just kind of dismembered cats. There's a lot of nasty looking dead cats in this movie. Hanging out. I don't know how street. real they are, but they look pretty damn real. It looks real. pretty bad. It's gross. And they go into this house, and <laughs> they're walking around, and <laughs> they open a closet. And, and then a skeleton <laughs> falls out of the closet. Skeleton makes a screaming sound. It's not either of the cops that make the screaming sound, that's for sure, because we're looking at their faces. It's like a haunted house screaming sound. <laughs> and then it basically fades out. And then you, That's it, it. And then it's it. You that's end, it. And then you completely change across the entire country. And now we're in Travis, Indiana. Yep. Which, if you didn't know, this uh, podcast is produced in Fort Wayne, Indiana. So bonus points go to the movie being set in Indiana. I didn't even know that was a thing. It made us feel like we were there. Yeah. The only... So I've actually been working on another idea for a podcast where we where I do like a uh, an auditory road trip across America. And I'm going to try to find a horror movie set in every single state. So I've done the search, horror movies in every state, multiple times to try to get a lot of different options for every state. Every single one of those lists, the only option for Indiana is Close Encounters of the Third Kind, which is a good movie. It's mm-hmm. fine. 
Borderline horror. Not horror. Yeah, really. I mean, you can kind of make it. I mean, Steven Spielberg just doesn't really get into the horror no. territory except for Jaws. Yeah, and even then, it, it, I don't think he meant to. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I was really excited to see what's set in Indiana because that gives me another option. Yeah. And honestly, I mean, I really like Close Encounters of the Third Kind as an actual piece of cinema. But as far as like the popcorn version of a horror movie, I don't necessarily know what that's called. Do we have, cause, cause there's popcorn movies mm-hmm. which are like, Hey, this plot's pretty bullshit, but just like, it's just a fun it's, to enjoy. Well, like a summer tent pole movie. Isn't Absolutely. That what they call them nowadays? Absolutely. It's like, so I don't necessarily know if there is a specific name for that in a horror movie, but I like them. The movie popcorn was that. And I liked that demons was that. And I liked that. I'm not walking away from a, that movie blown away by its use of artistry or like really impressed by how scary it is or like it's just like super fucked up and messes with your brain. Like I'm walking away from it saying this was a fun, cheap horror movie. Yeah. And those are okay. Those are definitely okay. I like a lot of them. There's nothing wrong with that. And so that that is what this movie is. For sure. Mm-hmm. And I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing. So how does this movie look and sound? For I nothing that really stands out for me. It's it feel it looks older than ni- than what I would think the nineties looked like. Yeah. But which I think is actually very typical of early nineties movies. I think that we have kind of this lens of, for a lot of us, what we consider the kind of like 90s look is really late 90s, even early 2000s. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's whenever we get into like the, um, I already forget what we called it in our 2000s episode, that just like Technicolor, Mm -hmm. um, sci-fi horror, things that started with like Event Horizon and the faculty and, you know, that just like. And started with those and then ended with, like, Jason X. Yes. <laughs> yes. And the Resident Evil movies yeah. and just, like, really bright, flashy horror movies. Um, so I think that a lot of times we equate a lot of that with 90s. Whenever that, that change didn't start happening till you know, late 90s. And so this is 92. I mean... Because, like, when I think of a, like a, a big 90s good-looking movie would be, like, not to say Steven Spielberg again, but, like, Jurassic Park. Absolutely. Like, it was, like, this giant achievement of, yep. of cinema. Yep. And it looks... Unreal. Looks so good. And then this feels very 80s. Absolutely. Like the 80s didn't really filter out of the way cinema looked until, like you said, like right. kind of the mid to the late 90s. Yeah, and I think maybe the horror genre was even further behind it. Like, you know, the probably the first actual 90s looking horror movie was probably Scream. If you're, because yeah. uh, that's a good, yeah. uh, that, that, I think that's a good benchmark of using like Jurassic Park as a mm-hmm. benchmark. Probably the, the first horror movie that looked as modern as that was probably Scream. Because even we watched, uh, talking about popcorn again, that was, I think, 91 or 93. And it looks real Oh, old. that looks mid-80s at best. Yeah. Like, <laughs> so, yeah. It doesn't look necessarily super great. Um, but, it, but it looks good enough. Good enough. It, the, it, there's there's a strong use of practical effects, yeah, like, which is good. I think the concept of the movie doesn't have to make it, doesn't have to be... Th- Oh yeah, uh, a, a very pretty picture. No, 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 no. And then, and then the sound. The sound is bad. It's whatever. The sound is bad. I I can appreciate the sound for what it is, and it can make a movie experience that I laugh at and I enjoy. But it's not because it's good. Yeah. Um. There's a lot of random ass heavy metal tracks in the movie for seemingly no reason. Um, It's just like, oh, car chase, heavy metal track. Like, we have to throw it in there. The soundtrack would confuse you. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, because then our our main villains, I already forget what song it was, but they own, like, one record, and they play that same uh, 45 over and over and over again. And I don't don't remember a score at all. Mm -mm. If it wasn't that, it was pretty much just, you know, Ambient sounds, I think. Yep. Uh, okay. Is the movie scary? I've been trying to get better at this as we watch movies to think about the questions we routinely Sure, ask. sure, sure. Um, 
I don't think so. It's not. It's not a scary movie. I don't think it's meant to be. And honestly, if it wasn't for the incest, I... <laughs> There's so many things we haven't talked about. We just breezed right past all that. I haven't even brought it up. Uh, <laughs> we haven't even finished what the what happens. That's true. We really didn't. <laughs> we just talked about how it opened. Yeah. And that's... Uh, so okay, let me let me backtrack a little bit into what happened. So, well, I, let me finish my thought. Um, I've also been exploring this idea. Um, we have uh, our our new friend Gory, the monster puppet. Yeah, and uh, he has been doing this project where. <laughs> By he, I mean it's me. Hey. <laughs> uh, he has been doing this project where he is looking for entry-level horror for children. Mm -hmm. My son is six years old. I've heard a lot of people talk about this on Instagram. Like, hey, you know, what do I show my kid? When is too, when is, what's too early? What's too late? Like, what are they ready for? And obviously every kid's different. But I'm walking down that path and exploring that through the lens of this monster puppet. Oh, yeah. And uh, so we watch Little Shop of Horrors. Um, we've watched a couple other things. But if it wasn't for the incest, I'd probably say Jonah could watch this movie and not even be afraid of it. Yeah. He might have fun with it. it the, the jump scares aren't good. No. So, like, no. that could be fun for a kid. If you asked me if there were any jump scares, I would say no. <laughs> That's how meh. They were. Well, well, there's a skeleton that screams. <laughs> uh, so that was the chair, by the way. <laughs> we got these new comfy chairs. I didn't realize that if I rock too much, they're going to make farty sounds. <laughs> there you go. Uh, <laughs> farty sounds. <laughs> so, so we opened up with that, and then we go to Travis, Indiana, and then we find out essentially that there's these like people that are... They're kind of vampires, but they're cat-based vampires. Well, we should even go back. You're one of your favorite things. Oh. It opens with text. Oh, shit. Bonus points. This movie actually gets <laughs> more bonus points than I'd like to admit that it gets. So many. So I have, I have a, a secret list of things that give movies bonus points. I've shared a couple of them as I go along. First of all, if they open with text automatic bonus point that comes from the first time i watched fargo and that opens with the text and i mm. loved it and i was like every movie should open with text like this this movie opens with text is it like it's a definition it was a definition of, of sleepwalkers of sleepwalkers yeah. that's right uh so whatever i i would rather it not open up with a definition i'd rather it open up with like a really cryptic uh piece of prose or like a statement but that's fine still gets the bonus points then very early on, do we move into a movie theater? Because Tanya, our final girl, our leading lady, works in a movie theater. So boom, bonus points there. Here's another one. She also has, there's also a scene of our final girl wearing headphones, walking around and dancing and singing to the song that's in her headphones. Boom, that's bonus points as well, because I love it when that happens. Love I it. mean, that's... Risky business. I mean, he's not wearing headphones, but still, same thing. Mm -hmm. It happens in, um, uh, shit, what's that movie? The the Ty West film, um, House of the Devil. Oh, yeah. Uh, which I love. I love that whole yeah, sequence yeah, yeah, of yeah. her with the headphones, and like then things get sh mm -hmm. super creepy. That probably comes from the fact that I wear headphones like... A lot. 80% <laughs> of the time. I probably wear headphones more than I don't wear headphones, and I have those experiences where like... Mm -hmm. Something that's not scary happens to me in real life, but because I have headphones in and I can't hear what the fuck's going on, it's terrifying. <laughs> it's not a scary <laughs> thing. It's like I open a cabinet and like something falls out. Like it's not that big of a deal. <laughs> but because I can't hear any of the auditory cues yeah. as to what's going on, <laughs> it's scary as fuck. <laughs> and that's just my everyday life. So <laughs> bonus points for a headphone dance scene. Um, and then I think that was all my bonus points. But still, three for this fucking movie is huge. It's usually one at most. Oh, absolutely. This somehow might sneak into being my favorite movie of all time somehow. <laughs> we'll never know. Um, <laughs> so, the two people continue. Yes, we find out that they are creatures of some sort. Um, they end up being these uh, vampires, yet cat-based, versus being, like, bat-based. What I love about the movie 
it it doesn't it doesn't bother telling us the rules. It doesn't bother really telling us what a sleepwalker is. It doesn't really call them vampires, but they like feed off the life force, which we found out in the, you know, like the uh, back of the box description. And it doesn't get too bogged down in the rules of its own universe, right? which I like <laughs> on the other hand. <laughs> so they look human, but their mother and son, but they fuck each other a lot. Yeah. And the mother can't go out and get new girls to come back to eat their life force or whatever. So the son has to do that for her. And because of that, she's kind of abusive. She gets very hangry. Very. <laughs> oh. And will abuse the shit out of her teenage son and then be like, oh my God, what happened? <laughs> so that's kind of weird. Uh,. This is such a bizarre movie, and it's so crazy because I feel like we both liked the movie. I don't want to ruin our rating, but like, I feel like we both liked the movie, but it's so bizarre, and it's hard to explain. Uh, we also find out that they they change their form, so like they look human, but they turn into these like cat, almost rat like even like these cat rat humanoid creatures that are really oily you know how practical effects are in the 80s and early 90s they're always really oily it's they like just... an oily naked mole yes they look very naked molish yeah. that's good and maybe that's part of what i'm missing here maybe they're not supposed to be cat like maybe they are supposed to be varmint like and that's why they are weak to the cats yeah because that's the thing that i can't figure about out about this movie so when these creatures get attacked by cats it's like a vampire walking out into the sun. They like start, it like burns them. They smoke. At, they smoke at the end of the movie when they're getting mauled by cats. They just catch on fire <laughs> for some reason. And so what I can't figure out is if they are cat people, why, uh, maybe this is because I'm a 90s kid and I grew up on Pokemon. Why are cat types weak against cat types? Right. <laughs> I feel like there's something that I'm missing. Yeah, like dog type, cat type, mouse type. And yes, this little triangle. there's a triangle. Yeah. Wait, dogs are weak to mouse type? Hey, they're scared. They're scared? They're scared. <laughs> my dogs would be terrified yeah, of a mouse. My dog would not attack a mouse. <laughs> Absolutely, that, may, that makes sense to me. So I, I need the rock, paper, scissors triangle of cats and these weird cat vampire things and sleepwalkers because I'm confused. Uh, so we find out they have this weird incest thing and then they, they, they also... Uh, we we also can piece together pretty quickly that that seemingly out of place opening scene in California was them, and then they have moved to try to yeah. start over. You know, uh, we find out from uh, Charles the son that maybe this has kind of been a cycle. We we get in, we get into a new place, everything seems fine. Mom gets hangry. I gotta go kill a bunch of girls. And then, bing, bing, boom, we got to move again. Yeah. This seems to be a pattern. Uh, my friend Pat took a turn. <laughs> I'm rewatching The Office. <laughs> <laughs> so, that happens. Uh, we find out that Charles has this kind of crush thing for Tanya, who is our leading lady final girl who works at the, um, the, uh, the movie theater. Mm -hmm. And so, he's pursuing her. We get some, like, back and forth little dating bits, which are fine. Uh, and then they, he ends up trying to eat her soul yeah. or her life force or something. And that's something. pretty much it. And that's pretty much movie. it. She she figures out what's going on. She runs back home. That's where this movie gets g really good, in my opinion. I thought her going home, she, they've already the, the police officers there. They're kind of trying to come down for the night. It seems like the movie's kind of over. Uh, so her and Charles gotten kind of a tiff. When he was trying to eat her soul or life force or yes. vitality or As whatever. You could imagine. Yeah, and she freaks the the hell out and she's kind of fighting back. She fights back really well. She is a very good final girl. Yeah. A very likable final girl. Extremely. For someone who is in a horror movie in the nineties that isn't even a slasher movie. I mean, like, she's a great final girl. I I really, really am rooting for her. I I love Tanya. She's doing an, an amazing job. Long live Tanya. Yeah, like, her, like her motivations are good. Yeah. Her personality is good. She's great. You want her to succeed. She's great. And so 
which is a shocker to me, who even knew that this character exists in this fucking movie. Mm. Uh, <laughs> so she gets home and she's like taking a bath and like she's kind of trying to come down from the whole situation. Obviously, her parents and the police are sorting out like, oh, it seems to she has this crazy story about him turning into a cat man and trying to eat her face off, but like maybe it was just like a sexual assault and like, she's trying to figure that stuff out in her own mind. That's what they're thinking. Um, but they're fucking pissed at him. Like they don't like that guy. They're not, right. they're not advocating for him, but I mean, the likelihood of him being a cat vampire is pretty low, right? Yeah. Some of that's probably made up most likely. And so they're kind of dealing with all that. And then the mom, the mom cat vampire comes to the house. Yeah. Knocks on the door. Dad answers the door. She kills dad. Bing, bang, boom. Then she gets an altercation with mom. Ends up killing mom. Then gets an altercation with the cop who was there kind of protecting. That whole scene plays out like Scream. Yeah. Like like them running. There's a little bit of just like running around, smashing vases on people, throwing shit. Like, I like that scene a lot. It felt like... This movie is a monster movie that feels a lot like a slasher. Yes. And I like that about it. Mm -hmm. You don't see that often. No. And so I really, really enjoyed that about it. Um, so after that, it, basically, Final Girl is a Final Girl, and she yeah. ends up surviving, winning. I mean, that's what Final yeah. Girls do. Um, after we get a weird-ass uh, Weekend at Bernie's Dance situation. Very much so. <laughs> and a couple other things happen, but she gets away. And that's then, then the the neighborhood stray cats attack, and they're led by the cop cat Clovis, the Be attack cat. Because we find we are introduced to a police officer character who's extremely endearing. Yes. I a hundred percent believe that the. Uh, Duffer Brothers, who did Stranger Things, have seen this movie. I 100% believe that Jim Hopper, in at least a little portion of his character, is somewhat based on this police officer character, yep. who I don't even remember his name, but he was amazing. And has a cat, no clue. a cat named Clovis. Instead of being a canine officer, he's a feline officer for some reason. <laughs> But it works out in this scenario because these these cat vampire things hate cats. Clovis saves the day. Clovis saves the day. He leads the fucking charge of like a hundred stray cats or more. Which where did all these cats even come from? If they're in this tiny little town, who knows? Whatever. Uh, they attack. They attack the the monsters. They burst them into flames. Tanya gets away. Yep. That's the end of the movie. Boom. Bing bang boom. Uh, the movie's not scary, but it's a lot of fun. If I had to pick a scariest moment, I think that it would have to be that ending part. I described it pretty at length. Yeah. It plays out like a great slasher, and I think that that's pretty scary mm -hmm. because for us and for Tanya, at this point, the nightmare is over, but there's still like 20 minutes of movie left. Yeah. And so that all starts to play out. And mm -hmm. I think that that's, that can be frightening as a viewer. That could be frightening as a person in that universe who's like, oh, I survived this crazy ordeal where this guy tried to eat my soul or something. Yeah. But now I'm at home. Everything's safe. Uh -uh, bitch, everything not safe. Like, that's scary. Yeah. So that's my scariest moment. I'd probably take that. I don't think there's a whole lot else. Yeah. It's, it's tough to find anything else. Okay. I would really like for you to describe the best kill of the movie. Oh, man. It's the police officer in the scene that we're talking about. It is. This scene starts off so, so high-level great slasher movie, and it ends so low-level great slasher movie. I, I, I the, the best kill, by far, makes the least sense, but it is still <laughs> the best. When the mom, cat lady vampire thing, is trying to get Tanya. There is a police officer there at the house who's kind of there to protect her. Yep. And through all the altercation, um, he is on the phone in the kitchen calling the, sh the his commanding officer, yep. saying, hey, this lady's crazy. We're under attack. We need backup. Right. And then you see the front shot of him on the phone, and then you see the lady come up behind him, 
and she grabs previously mentioned corn from the dinner he was eating. An ear of corn an ear on of the cob. Cooked corn. Cooked. Absolutely. Cooked. That should be prefaced. It's cooked. cooked. Stabs him through the spine in the back, kills him. Boom, bang, dead. Stabs him. Stabs, Stabs him. him with fucking ear corn. Ear cooked That's corn. The be- it's the best kill. It's there's the best some, kill. There's some it's other amazing. good ones, but that one is the best. It's amazing. If <laughs> It's probably going to be the thumbnail for the YouTube it video if they let me have that much blood in a thumbnail. I don't know, but... It's happening. That's probably what's happening. Uh, Okay, so let's go ahead and move into our thumbs up, our thumbs down, and our nuggets. I'm going to go first. Please do. The movie gets a thumbs up. It's a weird movie. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever, and it is somehow so enjoyable that none of that matters. And it kind of blows my mind at how much fun that I had watching it. Oh, shit. We didn't even talk about this. At one point in the movie, cat vampire boy Charles is driving a blue Trans Am, and then through his magic powers that apparently he has, he turns himself and the car invisible to hide from the police. Invisible. And when it returns, it's all of a sudden a red red Mustang. Mustang. We're like, how? None of this makes any sense whatsoever. They have the power of transmogrification. But it only lasts for a certain amount of time, or he has yeah, to focus it kinda, on it because it, it turns back later. Faded. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, but when he was invisible, Clovis the cat could still yeah, see him. the cats have <laughs> that special uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, the movie makes no sense, but I still liked it, and it gets a thumbs up. Uh, I'm going to throw... Honestly, I would... So, here's the thing. I don't know if you've picked up on this. I've felt lately that I do a lot of 70s or 75s, and I feel like that's such a bullshit answer because it's like either push it over the edge and say it's really good or dock it and say that it's not that good. And so I'm going to give this movie an 80%. It makes no sense. And you have to be very careful about who you're watching it with because you have to watch it with people who are going to appreciate something like this or maybe you're just watching it by yourself, you need to be in a headspace where you're going to appreciate something that makes no sense. This is not hereditary. I think I gave hereditary 80%. Yeah. This is not a hereditary no. 80%. It's a different kind of 80%, but it's still an 80%. Yeah. Is it my turn? Yep, go ahead. Um, thumbs up. It was... <laughs> It was one of the most fun I think we've had in a, at a, watching a movie yeah. in a while. And I would probably give it a similar 75 nuggies. Like, it's it's just, it's fun. If you go into it knowing what you're getting into, it is just, it's it's so, it's so good. Yeah. 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 See this movie. You'll enjoy it. That's good. Uh, this is at, currently, uh, I think it was at like, 60-ish percent. I have a 37 on here, but that wasn't true. That was for uh, La Llorona. Um, it has a, a 60-ish percent okay. on, on RT right now, if, okay. I'm, if I'm not mistaken, which is fine. I think it's better than that. Um, okay. That wraps it up for this uh, episode of Spoiler Vision. Do not forget that Spoiler Vision episodes are not our only episodes. Eek Speak is our horror house party, and you, my friends, are invited. Eek Speak is recorded live on YouTube Monday nights at 7.30 Eastern Standard Time. We'd love for you guys to join us and engage in the conversation in real time in chat. Uh, and, you know, a party is just not a party without guests. You bet. So we love having guests on the show. It has been so fun. Uh, meeting new people, even people that aren't new to us, but people that we have known for a while but have never talked about their horror origin story. We love hearing your horror origin stories, so that's been super fun. Um, And yeah, we would love to have you as a guest on the podcast. If you would like to be a guest on Eek Speak, please hit us up on Instagram at Eek Channel. That is E-E-K-C-H-A-N-N-E-L. And if you just want to help out the show, you can rate, review, comment, like, subscribe, enable notifications, all the things, wherever you listen, or don't do any of it. That's fine. Just tell a friend. We are doing something kind of special right now. Uh, YouTube has this kind of weird rule where if you have less than 100 subscribers, you're not really considered like a real channel. And so you don't get like a custom URL and stuff. That's really annoying. That should be something that everyone gets all the time. So we're trying to get up to uh, 100 
um, subscribers. So if you could just tell a friend, maybe yourself, if you have a Gmail account, you secretly already have a YouTube account. So even if you think you don't have a YouTube account, you might. So yeah, just log in, hit that subscribe button. We've gotten an extra like 40 in the last week or so. So uh, yeah, it's growing really fast. We're, we're 34, 36, I think, away from being at 100. So yeah, if you guys just want to help us out, subscribe on YouTube. That would be amazing. Thank you guys so much for listening. This has been a production of Eek Channel. We make spooky stuff for people like you. You can discover more content like this at eekchannel.com or find us on Instagram, Twitch, YouTube, Facebook, all the places. And don't be shy. We like making new friends. Thank you for tuning in and stay eeky out there. Ho, 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 ho. So we did forget one little tiny thing that uh, we wanted to do on this episode before we move on. Okay, if I'm being honest, we both really had to pee. Yeah. And we're back. Again. So we're back again. Uh, I'm just going to stick this on. It's like the tail end of the video. It's going to be great. Uh, I wanted to go ahead and roll for our new or our next month's pick. That way, whoever it is that is the co-host has the whole month for them to uh, think about a movie pick. And Josh, I would like for you to go do the honors. And what was that? I don't. You, you turn it. It's, it's more of a turning motion. Okay, there you go. That's working. You go again. Go. You got one. You got one. Now it drops. What's the letter? I. I. So Alex was B. Your I. Oh, it's me. It's you. Oh, snap. Guys, I'm really cheap. I just bought a bingo set. <laughs> That's how we're determining <laughs> who gets... To pick the next movie. So there you go. Next month, Josh, it's all you. Awesome. All right. Bye, guys. See ya.